This week we start our motor over to St. Martin. Guys, well, I'm not sure if we told you before, but our plan originally was to go to Virgin Gorda and spend a day or two up there testing the motor, and then we were going to go to check out there and get diesel. Um, but what we since found out is Virgin Gorda has no diesel, but we actually motored all the way back to Nanny Key, um, which isn't that far of it, and what, it's not what we wanted to do. We left Nanny Key about 35 minutes to go and we're heading to Sid Martin. So it should take about chocolate water says 18 and a half, but we're gonna be beating them all away. As we made our approach into St. Martin, we were greeted by all these vessels competing in the Heineken Regatta. We were both eager to get in the water and then quickly head over and check in at St. Martin. Silence is everywhere and you're not. Unfortunately, when we got back from customs and immigration, our boat Yellow had taken up quite a bit of water and Dave had to bail out again. Whilst bailing Old Yellow, the Simpson Bay Bridge opens up and all the vessels from the Heineken Regatta start coming in into the lagoon for the night. Unfortunately for these guys, they happen to lose steering just as they are about to go through, narrowly avoiding hitting the bridge. Hey babe, what are you doing? Bailing for about the hundredth time, water out of our <laughs> leaking dinghy that Nat loves so much and refused to let me replace. We decide to take advantage of the lagoon area and make the crossing through the bridge ourselves.
what we got today. So today has been a very expensive but exciting day. Our tender. Booyaka! James finally gets here. Hallelujah! We've been searching for a. Hallelujah! <laughs> He's uh, motor for our tender for what, three, four weeks now. Yeah, and there it is. We've looked at terrible ones for a lot of money and more terrible ones for not very much money. So in the end, we decided new for reliability reasons since we'll be in a lot of places where we can't get them fixed. That night, we decided to go out and have some food to celebrate the fact that we just bought a brand new motor. It's amazing. Look at that. It's got cheese, it's got meats, it's oh, the best Middle Eastern restaurant for sure. <laughs> hey guys, so today we are working on the stanchions as part of the thousand projects we have to do on this boat. Um, as some of you may know, uh, obviously she took a bit of a beating in the hurricane, so. There's a few stanchions here which need to be replaced. They're bent, so we're going to remove these. We have some replacement ones from Beneteau and reinstall them, so let's go. So we have to remove the lifelines here um, to be able to get the stanchions out. Now, I have to actually pull them from the bow back for these ones, and then I have to pull it from the stern back because, I don't know, that's the way it works for some reason. So, first thing is, I'm gonna remove the lifelines and before we pull the stanchions out. We did order these from Beneteau, we know you can pretty much bought in stock standard from most uh, marine stores, but um, being in Australia and trying to do everything from overseas, decided to go with Beneteau parts just to start. Straight ones in. Now we're gonna work on the double gates, uh, which new one. Nat's got the new one. Early the next morning, both Emilio and Christian come to work on our fiberglass repairs. Emilio, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's too shy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, operation getting our hatch put 
put in. So we're going to remove this old one and put the new one in. Woohoo! And we won't get any more leaks into the bedroom. And that's how bad that looks right now. There's been some patchwork happening at the bottom. Been there. Yeah. It looks, it's cracked here. And that's why we're getting yeah. the leaks. And it leaks through the handle and it leaks through this handle which isn't yeah. cracked and lands on my head because that's my side of the bed. <laughs> and it's been resealed and resealed. So, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this aluminum frame off because you reuse the aluminum frame. And we've got the new hatch there. So we're going to take this unit off here. Um, the new hatch does not have this center vent. Um, but we're not going to bother putting it on. We actually find we never use it and um, I'm not sure the benefits of this and for me the work's just not worth it. We'll so. be able to see the stars a bit better. That is true. Nat really wants to see the stars at night and this kind of gets in the way. Unfortunately while we were filming this we lost the instructions thanks to some really strong gusts of wind. I think, like I was trying to look for the ruler, you know when your eyes are just doing you under dark like that being in the right place. Yeah. kitchen um, and there is dust everywhere fiberglass dust everywhere um, probably can't appreciate it in the video but literally well, maybe over here you can see it that's the whole place is covered in this dust but Emilio has redone this bad boy up and it's looking really good I have a shower as best as I can. <laughs> a kind of shower. <laughs> I mean, we've been swimming in the ocean, but yeah. it just was like that salty feel for 10 days straight. So, yeah. And when there's been no rain during the day. During the day. Only at night. I was going to have a shower last night, but it was too cold. <laughs> bar shampoo so you have no waste at the end of it just this tin um one but i'll be using it for the next ones anyway ah! <laughs> Fiberglass dust. Everywhere. Everywhere. This is the guy that's killing our chain plate right now. <laughs> He's been bent over in a question mark for four and a half days now. This guy's an absolute legend. And if you ever need 
fiberglass work in San Martin. This is the guy that will While Emilio continues with the fiberglass in, James decides to get stuck in changing the chain plate bolts. One of these is really bent and the other one's straight, so I only need to change this one. I was going to change both, but they're actually horrendously expensive, um, and this one seems okay. So I'm just going to change this one for now. Unfortunately, it's a really complicated, well, not really complicated, it's just a really long process. I have to remove and loosen the chain plate tie rod down below and the shackles and all that. And then I have to undo the bolts that actually hold this down just to get this out. So it's going to take a bit of time, but um, I think we'll be alright. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have to basically loosen this nut. I've marked it here so I know how far up it needs to uh, go. And then I'm going to pull this cotter pin. Early the next morning we moved back to the dock to get some more work done. But before I know it, James is out rescuing some boat in the middle of the lagoon. Like a glove. How many times have you done this? Today or in total? <laughs> I just blew a plugger <laughs> and we found these stylish shoes in the um, Chinese shop for three dollars. So I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> fiberglass works finished, we decided to take an afternoon off and head over to the French side to investigate and also find some really good food.
that, the sound of our engine. Amazing. And I know I'm sitting on the wrong side of the boat, but it's to stop the boat from leaking. <laughs> if I put my weight on this side, and the water doesn't come in. Ooh. Bye bye, French side. All the good cheese. Our kitchen back together and we are able to turn the water pressure on. Happy to save my life. Ready? Invest in some new batteries. We meet Rob and Taylor who give us a tour of the amazing boat they captain on. The most exciting part of all, our mass installation begins. We're watching the carnival in St. Martin. 